kicking yourself for not investing in Bitcoin four years ago, you should be more regret about missing out on Nvidia. Check out this guy rocking a biker laser jacket with a tattoo on his shoulder and the hair like Geralt of Rivia. That's Jensen Huan, the CEO of Nvidia. He is the guy selling the stuff that 16-year-old bag their parents for and what AI startup founders from investors. I'm talking about graphic cards. Companies wait months to buy NVIDIA's GPUs. They have no competitors. And here is a fun fact. Juan spends Thanksgiving with the CEO of their main competitor because she is his cousin. OpenAI is even using their supercomputers. And in their full simulation of the real world, they're training robots. Sounds like something straight out of sci-fi movie where you would want to take the red pill, doesn't it? And the tech giants, startups, and basically the whole world rely on NVIDIA. This video was supposed to be a simple story about the company, but man, it took me places I never expected. You know nothing about NVIDIA. NVIDIA translates from Latin as envy. When the founders were working on their first chip design, they called each new version .nv means short for next version. When brainstorming a company name, they looked for words containing NV, and Jensen suggested the Latin word NVIDIA, which means envy. They thought, great, the whole industry will envy us. They dropped the I at the start and went with NVIDIA. As we know, Apple later picked up the dropped I. The trio who founded NVIDIA were these guys. It wasn't a college startup. Jensen had already spent years in chip design at AMD, yep, that main competitor of NVIDIA today. They've got lots of intersections, but more on that later. Then he was at LSI Logic. Chris and Curtis were engineers at Sun Microsystems. They met when Jensen was their account manager. At some point, Chris and Curtis came to Jensen with the idea to make their own chips. They discussed this at Dennis, a diner where Juan used to work as a dishwasher and waitress assistant, and decided to start their own company. The next day, Jensen tells his boss he is leaving to start his own business. His boss is like, OK, I'll hold your desk for you. And he calls Don Valentine. Listen, there is a guy you should meet. Jensen meets with Don. And he said, hmm, this is really bad, but Will says to give you money, so here, take it. That's how they got their first investments. By the way, the same Don Valentine was the first investor in Apple and Google. The man has a talent for picking successful startups. But let's get back to NVIDIA. The guys decided to make GPUs. At the time, computer games and 3D graphics were booming, and they believed there was a need for chips that could improve the processing of complex images. NVIDIA was not the only one with this idea. Back then, there were about 100 other companies doing the same, but only two survived. Later, I will tell you why. So, what exactly is GPU? How is it different from a CPU? And why does it even matter? Ms. Busters explained it very clearly. Here is how a CPU works. And this is a GPU. A CPU is like the brain of a computer. It can handle a different tasks, coding, opening browsers, managing files, and so on. But it handles these tasks one at a time. A GPU is like a mini helper for the CPU. It specializes in specific areas, like graphics and video, taking some load off the main brain. For example, when you want to run a powerful game on your computer, that's when the GPU kicks in. Its main advantage is that it can perform tasks simultaneously, and the GPU can't work without the CPU. Even OpenAI, which trains GPT model on NVIDIA GPUs for processing large amounts of data, also uses CPUs for overall process management. But the founders of NVIDIA made a mistake that almost cost them their company. NVIDIA's main office is made in the shape of triangles, and the interior has a lot of triangle elements too. And no, 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 it's not related to the Freemasons. When they were starting out, instead of manually drawing pixels, artists began creating 3D polygons from shapes known as primitives. NVIDIA compares primitives use triangles, but Juan and his co-founders decided to use quadriturals. 
Soon after the release of Nvidia's first product, Microsoft announced that its graphics software would only support triangles through DirectX. That's it, nobody else would use quadriturals. Money was running out, the current chip couldn't be used. What to do? Try to play by the market's rule, but make a better product than the competitors. Juan fired the most of the team. He asked the rest to develop a new chip, but the team said it would take at least two years to make a new chip. But we don't have the time, we have only nine months. But it's impossible to make a new chip within nine months. We don't have a choice. Juan heard about a new startup that had figured out how to emulate chips. They used it to emulate the graphic chips they were developing. It seems Nvidia was the only one client of this startup whose technology was not fully proven yet. But it was a chance. They managed to release a new chip optimized for processing triangle primitives in just six months instead of two years, with a performance similar to what their competitors had been working on. This was the Riva 128, and it was a success. They continued to outpace the market by updating their chips every six months instead of every two years. Actually, Nvidia never manufactures chips themselves. They only design them. But who develops them, you might ask? Basically, TSMC's Taiwanese factory, and NVIDIA is one of their biggest clients. Today, that's true, but getting to the top chip manufacturer TSMC was not easy. Back when they were just a small company, even TSMC sale reps wouldn't talk to NVIDIA. So Jensen Huang got crafty. Jensen wrote an actual physical letter to the CEO of TSMC. Surprisingly, Maurice Chan read it and called him back. Jensen, who was annoyed at the time because things were not going smoothly with their Riva 128, picked up and was like, yeah, who is this? And Maurice goes, hi, this is Maurice Chan from TSMC. I got your letter. Silence on the other end for a few seconds and Jensen yells, everybody shut up. Yes, I'm listening, Maurice. And that's how NVIDIA became one of the TSMC biggest clients. A couple of years later, NVIDIA released its main bestseller, the GeForce 256. Then Microsoft came along, wanting them as a key supplier for the Xbox. But that's not what really kicked off NVIDIA's success. Remember the game Quake? I used to play Quake online with other folks too. It was awesome. Gamers were buying the new GeForce cards so they could turn up the graphic settings. But some took it really seriously. Like Ian Buck, a PhD student from Stanford. He grabbed 32 GeForce cards and created an 8K gaming setup to play Quake. Then, Buck wondered if GeForce cards could be used for something besides launching Prenites in his bodies. The cards came with a basic programming tool called a shader. With a grant from DAPA, Buck hacked the shaders to access parallel computing schemes and turned GeForce into a budget supercomputer. Soon, Buck started working for Huan and kicked off NVIDIA's main chapter, CUDA. What is CUDA? Essentially, it's an adapter that lets you use NVIDIA graphic cards for computation in any field, from scientific research to self-driving cars and AI. It's free software that only works on NVIDIA hardware, a library for developers. Back back then, the market wasn't ready for it. No one really needs complex computation. And while they were looking for clients, NVIDIA even found a use in modeling the thermophysics of cooking frozen pizzas for General Mills. But soon, something happened that even Juan hadn't planned for. AlexNet. In 2012, during the ImageNet Challenge, a big contest where developers competed to see whose tech could recognize various images the best, the neural model AlexNet trained using NVIDIA's graphic chips and the CUDA came out on top. The idea was not new, but AlexNet did it using GPUs. <laughs> By the way, the AlexNet team also included now well-known Ilyasus Kerr from OpenAI. This was a huge explosion for AI. Essentially, AlexNet publicly showed everyone that it's pretty easy to write high-performance deep neural network on NVIDIA equipment. 
Sometime after AlexNet, Juan sent out an email saying that all efforts would now be focused on deep learning and that NVIDIA was no longer just a graphics company. By Monday morning, it had become an AI company. Jensen believed that neural networks would change everything, and he could monopolize the GPU market with a CUDA. But this might not have happened if Juan had agreed to a deal with AMD. In 2006, AMD almost bought NVIDIA, but they couldn't agree on who would have the merged business, so the deal fell through and AMD ended up buying ATI instead. Today, AMD is NVIDIA's main competitor in the GPU market. But that's not all they share. AMD CEO Lisa Su turns out to be Juan cousin. He claims he didn't know she was his cousin earlier. Sounds weird. Right? One of the first major companies to use NVIDIA GPUs for something other than their intended purpose was Tesla. Introduced in 2014, Tesla Autopilot was based on NVIDIA chips, so under the hood of Tesla there was actually an NVIDIA chip. NVIDIA even produced special NVIDIA Tesla graphic cards for a long time. Elon Musk also became a kind of adapter for NVIDIA into the AI world. He was at one of the NVIDIA's conferences where Juan was presenting his first supercomputer. It took me five years to build it. At first, I built it for our own engineers. And I spoke about it at one of our conferences, and Elon saw it. He goes, I want one of those. And, and uh, he said, he, he told me about OpenAI. I, I delivered the world's first AI supercomputer to OpenAI on that day. That period was all about research, so it didn't give NVIDIA any immediate advantages. But the foundation was late. But what was NVIDIA doing while the market was getting ripe for AI? NVIDIA caught the wave of cryptocurrency and NFTs. When mining went mainstream, it turned out that NVIDIA's GPU were the best for the job. Of course, the gamers suffered the most because miners snapped up all the video cards. But later, NVIDIA released a special GPU line just for miners. NVIDIA's stocks rose with Bitcoin, but they fell with it too. And 2022 turns out to be the worst year in the company's history. But then a new trend popped up. November 2022. OpenAI introduced its ChatGPT, and suddenly the video game chip maker was riding the wave of the generative AI boom. NVIDIA once again became the gold rush shovel seller. AI, 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 AI. AI. Today, 70% of all AI chips are NVIDIA's. There is a war in the world of artificial intelligence, and NVIDIA is the only arms dealer. It seems like NVIDIA just happened to be in the right place at the right time, but is it really it? Or was it a strategy that just worked out? For 10 years, these guys developed GPU not for graphics, but for heavy computations. They built an ecosystem. CUDA saves developers hundreds of hours thanks for libraries and ready-made frameworks. All the tech giants, startups, and the world depend on NVIDIA. There is a waiting list 18 months out, but where are all their competitors? Seems like everyone really missed the boat. All the cloud computing power, it's all running on NVIDIA. It is obvious the market is so hot that NVIDIA can't stay the only player forever. The tech giants are feeling their dependency on NVIDIA too much and start their own internal developments. But that takes time. There are a lot of startups offering alternative solutions like optimizing CPU for this and other things. Eventually, the neural network training boom will pass and maintaining AI will require hundreds of times less power. And then what? NVIDIA keeps powering up and distancing itself from potential competitors. They launched Omniverse, the metaverse as it should be, for training robots so that autopilots don't hit real people on the streets of California, but train on virtual one that's so similar real ones. Merging computer graphics with its a generative artificial intelligence. You think this is real Juan? It's his avatar. Imagine the level of similarity. NVIDIA has been developing in this direction for six years now. NVIDIA graphic cards support ray tracing, which simulates how light reflects off objects, creating photorealistic effects. And the company hasn't forgotten about games. 
How about an NPC that lives its own life? Thanks for AI, NPC can now generate meaningful responses. I've been trying to avoid you, just been super busy. How are things? Things are fantastic. Just secured a juicy contract with Zenith and Sons. And even adjust their lips movement and facial expressions to match their lines. <laughs> and the cherry on top. Unlike most other tech companies, Huan support remote work. And NVIDIA employees can choose how they prefer to work in the office or at home. By the way, I have a video on this topic. Check it out if you haven't seen it yet. If you have anything to add about NVIDIA, I'm waiting you in the comments.